Hello, VBCPS families and staff. I'm Aaron Spence, Superintendent of Schools, and I want to thank you for joining me for another in our ongoing series of desk-side chats. I wanted to take the time in this month's chat to talk about next year's proposed budget, as well as our budgeting process. First and foremost, I am really pleased to report that on Tuesday, March the 7th, our school board voted to pass our budget resolution. This is a budget we can all be proud of as it prioritizes staff compensation, school safety, and student support. Before I go through these budget priorities and discuss a few line items in the budget, I wanted to give you all just a little bit of background on how we develop a budget. So this final vote on our division's budget starts with the development of what we call the superintendent's estimate of needs for the coming school year, or what we refer to as the CON. To develop the CON, I work with our budget staff and we collect budget requests from all departments and schools. And of course, we consider the priorities of the school board, our staff, our families and parents in our community as we begin this process. As we start building our budget around those priorities, the first thing we do is look at current and historical spending to make sure we're meeting our goals and spending wisely. And we make adjustments within the current budget as needed. For example, we can account for declines or increases in student enrollment by adjusting the number of teachers that might be needed in our classrooms. Next, we look at our current budget and we compare that to projected revenue for the next fiscal year. Projections that we use to develop the operating budget include revenue projections we receive from the state for basic aid and for sales taxes, projections for federal revenue, and projections we receive from the city based on the city and school's revenue sharing formula which can be found in city policy. Once we have those projections, we better understand what money is likely to be available to the school division to support our needs for the coming year. And with this understanding, I begin to work with my team to present a balanced budget to the school board that includes any anticipated reductions or additions to the operating budget based on those projections I just talked about. We then work with our school board to get that budget passed in a way that reflects their priorities. Now, before I talk about what was in that budget passed on March the 7th by our school board, I just want to address one question I'm sometimes asked about our budget. So people often wonder, why does the school budget continue to increase when student enrollment declines or stays relatively level? So the short answer is this, about 85% of our expenditures are in employee compensation and benefits. So if our employees are going to receive compensation increases or raises, and or if we need to spend more as a school division on employee benefits, then our operating budget needs will increase even with the same number of students in our schools. And of course, there are other fixed costs that grow despite level enrollment, things like fuel costs, utility costs, waste management costs, things that we just don't control. With that context, I'd like to talk about what is in our proposed budget that our school board just considered and approved. So our operating budget revenue is projected to be just over $930 million. This is an increase in revenue of just over $58 million. So the state share of the new revenue we're projecting is just over $31 million. The local share of that new projected revenue is about $27.4 million. And federal revenues are projected to remain relatively level. So where are these dollars proposed to be spent? Well, let's start with staff compensation. The proposed operating budget provides us with the resources we need to run our school division every day and allows us to offer a competitive salary and benefits package to our employees. Offering attractive salary and benefits package bolsters our ability to recruit and retain an exemplary workforce and we are proud that this budget will help ensure our staff is compensated competitively in our market. So in December, we presented our school board with the findings of a 2022 compensation study that we conducted in partnership with a group called the Siegel Group. And what we found was that in order to meet the board's compensation philosophy goals, we needed to increase employee salaries across multiple positions. The study assessed our pay scales and recommendations were made to address deficiencies in each of those scales, which will ensure not only more competitive pay now, but will also allow for steady salary growth over time for our employees. The proposed budget takes a significant step forward by putting $53.5 million towards compensation, again, with the goal of making us competitive with surrounding school divisions and recruiting and retaining an exemplary, diverse workforce, as outlined in Goal 4 of our strategic plan. Of course, 
There are other issues that need to be addressed beyond compensation. You know, for example, with the recent incident in Newport News, we've naturally been hearing from a lot of parents and staff who are concerned about safety here in BBCPS. It's really important to me that our community knows we are constantly assessing and improving the safety and security of our schools and offices. Division leadership and our dedicated team of safety, security, and emergency management experts continuously evaluate ways to best support the safety, security, and mental health needs of all of our students and staff. And leveraging our budget to support safety and security in our schools remains a high priority. That's why since 2018, for example, we've enhanced our security assistant positions and implemented ongoing training requirements for these individuals. We've installed security desks and buzz-in systems in all of our buildings, and we've implemented the Raptor Visitor Management System. It's also really important to know that more recently, we've begun phasing in armed school security officers in our schools to support our school resource officers and to provide an additional layer of assurance to our stakeholders. And we have put money in our proposed operating budget to fund 15 school security assistants in our elementary schools in the new fiscal year. The operating budget also includes funds to convert additional security assistant positions to those school security officers I mentioned a minute ago. There's much more work to do, however, and I think it's important to directly address the fact that we've seen more issues with student behavior in the last few years around the division, as well as the state and across the nation. We've also seen extreme behaviors occurring within younger age groups than ever before, and we know this conversation around school safety, while it has many layers, we recognize that student behavior is a big part of the conversation. That's why on top of making security improvements like those outlined above, we're also continuing to focus on behavior and mental health by proposing three additional behavior intervention positions in this budget. These positions work directly with teachers and principals to support students with the most challenging behaviors. And these additional positions will allow us to provide more consistent services across our schools. And there's other budget considerations as well. For example, we are really proud of the diversity of our students. I'm wondering if you knew that there are over 90 languages spoken in VBCPS, for example. Well, enrollment of ESL students has increased by 75% over the last nine years in Virginia Beach. So on January 31st, we opened our International Welcome Center, which sits within our Family and Community Engagement Center. This IWC is a one-stop shop for our ESL families who need assistance with registration, academic planning, and navigating the journey in our school division. While this is an important step forward, we must do more. The average caseload for ESL teachers at the elementary level is 45 to 55 students across two or three schools. We have to ensure appropriate state-required instructional time for these students, and de decreasing caseload in the number of schools served will support this. As a result, this proposed budget includes an additional 15 ESL teachers. And there are other needs addressed in this proposed budget as well, including 12 additional school-based positions to support teachers and students. Positions like nurses and general assistants, administrative assistants, and a literacy teacher. There's also budgeted funds for site assigned substitute positions. And there are funds to cover increases in fixed costs like utilities and fuel, telecommunications, waste management, and landscape services. So I want to thank you all for listening and taking this walk through the budgeting process with me. I think it is so important for our stakeholders to understand and appreciate all of the work that goes into making the VBCPS budget. And it's important to know where our tax dollars are being invested. We do this in order to positively impact our students and community. And I want to take a moment to thank our budget and our human resources staff members for working tirelessly with me on this process. I also want to thank our school board for their support in moving this budget forward. As for what's next, this budget will be presented to City Council in April, and we are hopeful that City Council will then approve the final budget in May. We are really looking forward to our conversation with them about this budget. And in the meantime, if you would like more information about anything I've shared today, please visit the budget page on our website at www.vbschools.com. Dot com. Thank you.